so. Hi. <laughs> Today, Jerry. What's your name? Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> I already know her name is Okay, Jerry. I'll be doing your visit today. I'm going to start by asking you a series of questions, and um, then I'm going to do an exam. So, at any point uh, the exam becomes uncomfortable, you let me know. Okay. 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 So, what are you here for today? I just have a really bad sore throat, and I'm not able to handle it much longer. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me when you started? About three days ago. Yeah, what does it feel like? I just, I don't know, it's like scratchy, achy. Scratchy and achy? Yeah. Is it hurt to swallow or hurts to swallow? Okay. Have you had anything like this before? Not this bad, no. No? Is this on a scale of one to ten for your sore throat? What would you say it is? Have you looked in your throat? Have you seen anything on your tonsils? I tried, uh -huh. and it's kind of hard to see, but I, I didn't notice anything. No. Okay. It just looked, you didn't see any white patches or no? Okay. I mean, maybe a little red, but nothing. Like just a little red. red. Okay. Okay. For three days, you got it. Um, and it's mostly pain right here in your throat. Mm -hmm. Does it spread anywhere else, the pain? No. And so it's scratchy and achy. Is it um, worse when you swallow? Yeah. Okay. Worse when you swallow. And so what brought it on? Did you just wake up with it one day? Or what other symptoms have you had maybe? Um, I've just been really tired and exhausted. I feel kind of weak. Okay. Um, and I've had a fever. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I think the highest I took was um, like 101. Oh, 101. When was that? Around 101. That was oh. last night. Last night. And have you had a fever all three days or just, uh, would you say? The last two for sure. I'm not sure about the first day. I didn't take my temperature the first day. Okay. So fever 101 last night. Today you have a temperature of 100.2, so you still have a fever. Mm -hmm. Have you taken any medications? I uh, Yeah, I've tried like Dayquil and during the day and Nyquil at night. Okay. It doesn't really help all that much. Does it bring the throat pain down at all? A little bit. A little bit to still feel it. And when was your last dose? Um, last night I didn't take it. Okay, so last night. We asked that because it has Tylenol in it and it'll bring down your fever. So I just wanted to know when the last time you did take it. Okay. So um, usually people have a sore throat like with a cold. So do you have a runny nose? Mm -hmm. You do have a runny nose. Okay. And did that start with the. Um, yeah, it all kind of started with being like a so like a 12 hour period. Uh, what about, um, does your face hurt? Do you have nasal stuffiness or just runny? It's mostly just runny. Runny, and what, what color is the mucus? Um, that comes out of my nose? Yeah, when you blow it. clear. Clear, okay. Do you have um, a cough? Yeah. Okay, is anything it's coming up? No, it's dry. Oh, it's a dry cough, okay. Is it worse in the morning? Mm, yeah, a little bit. Okay, sometimes when you get um, post-nasal drip, it's it uh, drips down and can cause that. But um, so, okay, so you have a runny nose, fever, <coughs> cough, and very sore throat. Is anyone around you sick? Not at home, but at work. There's been, I'm a teacher, and oh, okay. some of the staff and some of the students have been sick. Okay, so you're a teacher. What do you teach? 
<coughs> English, English at a um, high school, middle school? High school. High school. Okay. So you're exposed to a lot of different students and stuff, and people explore. So. Okay. Okay. And um, just so I know, who do you do you live? Um, are you married? Mm -hmm. Married. Okay. And do you have children at home? Two. Two kids. How old are they? Uh, Fifteen and seventeen. Okay. And they feel well. Everyone feels okay? So far. Okay. And anyone else living in the home? No, okay. Uh, I'm just going to get an idea of your past medical history so I can help connect this together. Um, do you have a history of diabetes? Hypertension? Hypercholesterol? I mean, uh, high cholesterol? No. No? A any chronic illnesses? Asthma? No. No? Okay. Um, do you take any medications other than your Dayquil and NyQuil? Do you take any daily medications? Have you ever taken any daily medications? No. no okay. Um, do you take any herbal remedies, like anything over the counter besides Dayquil, Nyquil? No. Okay. And have you ever had any surgeries? Uh, I had my appendix taken out and I was sick. Okay. Nothing good for you. <coughs> have you ever had any? Um, <coughs> Plastic surgery, any uh, anything like that with your eyes, LASIK, anything like that. Okay. And any injuries to your face, your neck, nothing like that. Okay. When was your last um, period? Uh, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. And um, any chance you could be pregnant? No. 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 no? My husband had a vasectomy. Husband had a vasectomy. All right. Well, it's two is plenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two is good. Um. Okay. Any allergies to medications? Any allergies, uh, environmental allergies, like to cats or grass or mm -hmm. no, nothing like that. Nothing makes you sneeze. Mm -hmm. And any food allergies? No. Okay. And when's the last time you went to the doctor? Um, probably about eight months. Ago. Eight months ago. What did they, did you have a physical? Mm -hmm. And everything was okay. Yeah. Okay. Up to date on your pap smears. Mm -hmm. They're normal. Okay. Uh, talk about your family history. Your mom and your dad are they alive and well? Uh, my dad passed. Um, my parents divorced when I was young, but I don't really know much about him. Okay. Do you know what he died from? I don't. You don't know what he died from? Okay. Um, what about your mom? She's 80. Um, she's she's alive. She's well. She doesn't live in the area, so I don't see her very much. But um, she would be on the phone. Okay. Sure. She's fine. She's good. No, no medication. <laughs> no? Okay. You have siblings? <clears throat> no. No siblings. Okay. Uh, did, uh, in the family that you know of, any cancers, um, heart attacks? Mm -hmm. Very blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and then um, are you, do you exercise? Uh, I don't go to the gym, but I go for a pretty good walk, like maybe three times a week. Have you been able to exercise since you got sick? Because you just feel too cruddy. Yeah. Okay. And do you drink any alcohol? I do. <coughs> How much do you drink? <coughs> I usually like a couple of drinks at night. Two a night? What do you drink? Oh, I usually red wine. Red wine. So two glasses a night? Mm -hmm. Have you, um, how many years have you been doing that? Um, on and off, probably about 10, 15 years. Okay. All right. Have you ever, um, with that amount of wine, have you ever felt the need to cut back on it? No. No? Okay. Has anyone mentioned your drinking? Does it annoy you? No, no one's mentioned it. Uh, do you ever feel guilty for drinking? I don't know. I mean, there are times when I, I wonder, like, if it's healthy, if I should keep doing it. I mean, they say one glass of wine is mm -hmm. good for you. I usually have two. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I never feel like I'm getting drunk or anything. Okay. So. Okay. I mean, sometimes you just wonder. Okay. And then you don't use it in the morning and you wake up to... <laughs> yeah. Okay. We we asked those four questions. Um, if people answer um, yes to more than two, we worry about alcohol dependence. I would try and recommend decreasing to try one glass a night. Yeah. Just um, we don't know the uh, long term consequences can be for two a night can be um, somewhat maladaptive. So it's interesting. Do you smoke cigarettes? No. Have you ever smoked? No. No. Does anyone around you smoke? No. 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 no? Okay. And do you do any kind of drugs? Marijuana, cocaine? Um, 
feed. <laughs> what else is out there? <laughs> What's the new one? Fentanyl. <laughs> Bath salts. All the, all the <laughs> teens that you're working on doing. Tide pods, yeah. And have you traveled recently? I wish. No, no travel. Only in the summer for teachers, right? <coughs> right. Okay. And lastly, I just want to know, um, you are having body aches, is that right? Yeah, it's just like, I can't really think, it's just like every day feels weak and achy. Just feel weak and achy. Okay, have you lost or gained any weight in the last six months without trying? No. No, okay, no weight changes. Any nice ones? Mm -hmm. um, have you had trouble with your secretions, like you can't swallow them or you're drooling? No, I mean, swallowing has been hard, but it's just because it hurts. But it's not like you choking up. <clears throat> no. Have you had a change in your voice? I don't think so. No. And you don't have any family history or personal history of thyroid problems? No one's had a big <coughs> thyroid or no one's ever told you you have a big thyroid? No, okay. Um, any headaches? Mm, mildly. Just mild? Headache. Okay. Yeah, it's just been any dizziness? Any heart, chest pains, heart palpitations? No. Um, difficulty breathing? I know you have a cough, but do you feel short of breath? Like where you're really winded recently? I mean, I feel like <coughs> like activity makes me a little bit, I mean, it's not like I can't breathe at all, but I feel it and I usually don't. Okay. Like I go up a flight of stairs. Okay. But just, just <coughs> since you've been sick yeah. the last three days. Okay. Um, any, any uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea? Mm. No. Any swelling to your legs? I don't think so. No. Okay. Mm, I think what else I want to ask? <coughs> Sore throat. Any uh, uncomfortableness in your abdomen? Like do you feel? Um, mm. No. Okay. And have you ever, in the past, like maybe when you're in college, had mono, or is this the worst sore throat of your life? Um, it's pretty bad. Yeah. It's pretty bad. I've never had mono. Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me about your short throat before I examine you? Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, I guess I'll start my exam if I think of anything <coughs> to ask you. I'm just going to start by. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Any um, pain to your head? No. Is this painful at all here? No. Painful here? No. Okay. I'm going to look in your ears. Does this hurt when I pull in your ear? No. Does it hurt when I push in your ear there? No. Lovely eardrum, nice and bright. Does it hurt when I pull? No. When I push? No. Eyes red. Yeah. You look up for me. Good and then down. Good. Okay, I'm gonna feel the nose around your face. Okay. Any pain? Yeah. Is it okay if I untie your gown a little? Sure. Okay. Is this uh, painful back here? No. Have you noticed any lumps here by the collarbone? No. gonna feel the two thyroid's not big, okay? Mm -hmm. Can you swallow for me? Mm -hmm. It hurts, huh? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna listen to your heart and lungs. Um, <coughs> make sure you're okay. What's going on here? I'll, um, let's turn in the front here. When you feel messed up with both on your chest, just go ahead and take big breaths in and out, okay? <laughs> You're not going to say that. 
that for real. <laughs> I'm gonna get under your breast. Do you wanna lift it up yourself or do you want me to do it? Here, other side actually. Good, okay. Good, okay, other side. Give me the skin here. Good, okay. I'm just gonna lift up under here. Good. Let's see, sorry. <laughs> Good, okay, big breath. Good, get all those lobes here. I'm gonna lift this into the back. Um, I won't torture you, don't keep breathing. Two, three, three, four, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. Okay, all right, very good. Okay, come back around. I'm actually going to feel your belly. Um, And you haven't had any nausea, vomiting, or bowel pain? Okay. No? Yep, okay. Or diarrhea? Yeah. You've been eating okay? Your appetite been okay? No, I haven't really had much of an appetite. Do you uh, uh, follow a special diet at home? No, I mean, we eat pretty healthy. We like lots of vegetables, proteins, not a lot of sugar, salt. I haven't, I just haven't been having really anything. And then if that's the swallows, so I just, I don't know if you're eating, but you just get to know. Okay, I'm gonna have you take a big breath. Okay, another big breath. Good, I'm just feeling for any big uh, liver or spleen. And I don't see anything. Good, okay. All right, go ahead and sit up for me. And then, Hang tight, because camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, I'll tell you what it says after. Okay, thank you, these are your findings, very good. Um, I think that concludes um, my exam today. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me um, before I um, go talk to my preceptor? I see that you do have some swollen nasal mucosa, and um, it says your throat is, um, um, not with any white patches, but you do have swollen lymph nodes here. That's that's what I'm finding, and that um, that you do have some clear discharge. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to tell me before I go talk to my preceptor and we come back and tell you the plan? Okay. All right. Um, well, that concludes my visit, and thank you so much for um, letting me see you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, before I let my actress go, do you have any burning questions for her? Do we need her? Let me think. Do you really have a bad cough? I know. She's good. She's, she's good, good, right? She's good. She's good. Um, okay. Let me let her go and then we'll be brief. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's that's the million dollar question. Once you pick out um so Okay. Why don't let's go through each thing and I'll tell you what I was thinking. But maybe that would help the most. Um, but this is where why you need all this practice because yes, what do you you know how to do a whole long cycle. What do you pick out mm -hmm. to do? So I did it because her lungs were clear and she has no history of anything. So to take all the time to do, um, you know, symmetry expansion, percussion, palpation, and I just did auscultation. Um, in, a, in a real world setting, you wouldn't, with clear lungs and no history, um, I don't know that that, other providers might totally disagree, but honestly, you don't see a whole lot of people percussing, 
for a healthy person with a sore throat. And why did you propose to ask? Because um, I asked her she had, with mono, um, I was looking for her to have a skin mineral. And that's my way of checking the liver edge. That's why. So that's where it gets hard because you've learned how to do a thorough body part assessment. So what do you pick out to do for a focused? That's where it gets hard. And we're not having to explain during, like remember when we first did the test to get into the class, we're not having to say what we're looking at the whole time, are we? Or we're just doing it as if it were a real life assessment. We're not going, oh, I've done this or I've done that, narrating as we go, right? Um, you, you can say, um, you tell the patient what you're gonna do. Okay, but That's we're not easy. saying as if we're narrating it. Well, no, it's kinda hard because we give you a findings card. So like I was looking in her ears and they were perfect, but what if I hand you a card that says her ear is red? So, so more more so, we want you to say, okay, I'm going to touch you, you know, I'm, and like I said, does this hurt or does this hurt? I'm going to look in your ears, I'm going to look in your nose, that kind of thing. So just more talk to the patient about what you're going to do. Okay, so um, it started with the history of the old cart. Um, I probably jumped around a whole lot because I'm not, I, I like to kind of get to the meat of things first. So I don't know, I probably jumped around a whole lot. I didn't stick to a lot of the scenario. I know I jumped around, but that's my way because I want to know kind of who they are before I start working up the symptoms. What was the connection between the thyroid and the cough? Uh, if you have fibromyalgia, it can trigger a cough. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where also knowing your differentials comes in. So probably, honestly, your big key thing in um, all those nine chief complaints is get to know some so write down lots of differentials for each one because one of the differentials was thyromegaly triggering maybe part of the cough or it can cause sometimes a sore throat. So um, that's why I was ruling out her thyroid. So for each of the nine complaints, get to know your differentials so that you know what to ask because the differentials drive what you're asking. I thought of mono Mono is typically the worst sore throat of your life. It's typically crowded, living in a crowded environment, which is why I wanted to know if anyone else lived with her. And so because I had that as a differential, that drives all your asking and your associated radio system. So that's like the key to health assessment, I think, is knowing your differential so you know what to ask. I don't even know every differential for everything. So that's why it gets hard. You don't know what you don't know. And so that's why, um, Knowing red flag differentials is helpful. I asked the trouble with secretions, the drooling muffled voice, because that's a differential for epiglottitis, um, uh, tons hair tonsillar abscess. So that drives those questions. Um, the thyroid drove, you know, family history of thyroid, personal history of thyroid, has anyone ever had a big neck? Um, that drives those questions. Uh, and then I gave my associated review systems at the end. To me, that makes more sense because you kind of have a picture of who she is, then are you having, but it doesn't have to be that way. Every provider does things differently, but that to me makes the most sense um, to ask them at the end because you kind of get a picture of who they are um, and can ask questions, but you can put them right after the HPI. And why did I ask about her period? Why did I even care? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in case I give her antibiotics, I want to know if her husband's had a vasectomy. Am I worried that she's trying to get pregnant? Or nope, she said I have two kids, that's enough. So, end the story on that. Um, at, at 40, she could totally be trying to get pregnant. What if she doesn't have kids and she wants to get pregnant? Then you would want to look at your pregnancy category or whatever you're giving her to make sure it's safe just in case. And say, if you're trying to get pregnant, it's up to you. Do you want to take these? generally safe but um, you know this is this is what's going on so um, what else and then associated were so what the biggest differentials is like uh, oh you know what I forgot what did I forget yeah, I, I oh, forgot. Oh, the day out with the hoarseness and loss mm -hmm. of weight. I was like, oh, she's doing all the PPD assessments. Yeah, but did I ask her if she had a PPD or a flu shot? No, mm -hmm. totally forgot that. So that that uh, I missed. Did I ask night sweats? Really? I asked night sweats. Not if everything else was 
would be influenza and so um, so that, that is something that would have been very important to ask flu shot you can still get it having a flu shot or not um, but um, with fevers and sore throat body aches influenza is a, a big one and so viral URI yes I've gone into a sore throat and they don't ask me for my family history yeah is that because of the we do it very thorough here so you learn okay. um, you'll pick up what you need to do at certain places and it depends on if you've seen them before and you have it in the chart okay. if you're working urgent care and you think it's associated or related then you would ask for for this one because I was worried about our thyromegaly mm -hmm. To me, that was appropriate. Um, but um, does it matter that our mom and dad are alive and well? And I mean, you have to choose if that matters. But we do teach you more on the thorough <laughs> side, mm -hmm. so that you can back it up as you need to. Mm -hmm. And do you only ask about mom, and dad, or also siblings? Yeah, mom, mom dad, siblings, um, uh, uh. and then so one or two generations up, and then lateral too. Um, yeah, so I forgot my health maintenance, which which I wrote down, but I didn't. Um, I wrote just the section, and I asked her when she went to the doctor, and everything was fine. But I did not ask her um, that thing. So that would that would be something that I would then, whoever was debriefing me, would say you did fine, except you forgot to ask these two things, and I go, oh. Um, so as long as uh, you know, it's it's a safe. Um, Safe. <laughs> I don't know if that's even a, it, if everything matches up. If it's a, a concise physical for the history, and um, it flows well, and most red flags are obtained. Then, then stop. Yes. I mean, like in some of the departments, it's like maybe I shouldn't ask this. Mm. So she works at a school. Could we gather that she's probably not a recognized person because she works at a school or that's not that we're seeing this? Um, you. Can't assume because what if she's total anti-vaccine? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and some nurses don't want to get it either, so I wear masks. So always ask all their Well, ones that are would be appropriate. So I want to know so much about her tetanus, not so much. I'd want to know about her her flu mostly. So the health maintenance. What questions should you have? If she, when was her last flu shot and PPD? You didn't have to ask the question. No, okay. no. Okay. So that's where these focus get hard. Okay. You have to pick out of everything you've learned in this class and how to apply it focused to the chief complaint. And so that's what we look for going down too many rabbit holes. You know, if you, if you take 18 to the 20 minutes, you know, can you tell me your hep B series as a child? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like going down those kind of rabbit holes, then, then no, no, you know. <laughs> Um, sink trap. But a general overall uh, history of the time, time trap. Yes. Or no matter what, so after the like cardiovascular, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So even though we vaccine, mm -hmm. like two mm -hmm. minutes of your, because you have to do full breath in, full breath out for each of those, what, 18, 16, <laughs> um, To be thorough, yes, we've decided for every chief complaint. And, but that's why I wrote on your OSCE expectations basic heart and lung. If they're, okay, so they're there for a cough. You're not just going to listen. Then you'll do the inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, symmetric expansion, all that. Maybe some special voice tests if you're looking for COPD. So then you would do everything versus just listening. I just listened because um, I knew that the finest parts of the lungs were clear, so I just listened. But even with a sore throat and no past medical history, no smoking, 
would it necessarily start to help for you to do all the advanced tasks because that's not necessary. But the basic respiratory is full auscultation. Yeah. Yes. All the Inspection, I guess I could say, you know, chest diameter was two to one. I think that I could have said that out loud. Um, and auscultation of all the spots. But like I said, if it's cough, then you're looking at full. And if it's I, so I only looked at her conjunctive sclera. To me, I just wanted to make sure she didn't have a conjunctivitis going on with um, what I was thinking was a cold. Um, so um, conjunctiva and sclera, if she had an eye complaint, would I have done, what if, I, what if you saw me for this doing all the six cardinal fields of gaze, confrontation, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, fundoscopic, Snellen, that's what I'm talking about, a rabbit hole. Like, mm. don't go down that, even though we've taught you all of those eye things, those are not appropriate for us to approach. You can, that's what doesn't you mean you should. Out, and that's what these next few weeks of practice will help you because you'll be doing these scenarios and then you'll come get myself, Professor Lamb, and say, this is what I did. And then we'll say, what did you think of this? Yes, okay, sorry. I know everyone's probably gonna hate me, but <laughs> she had a cough. And yeah, you're you're you right about that. That was a little a little odd, but um, they were meant to be clear. So, and if you get a Fineys card and it doesn't have what you think, then just assume it's negative. Like her Fineys card was just um, swollen nasal mucosa, clear nasal DC, and tonsillar lymphadenopathy. So I have to assume the heart the heart lungs were normal and everything uh -huh. was normal. Thyroid was normal. Okay. We're not going to put all the normals. But um, if you have the problem is if you get to your 20 minutes mm -hmm. and you give this at the 20 20th minute. Then you yeah. have to leave the room. If you have two minutes left, you go, you know, it's okay if I check one more thing. Mm -hmm. You'd rather you, I see. you just can't leave the room and then come back. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of think. And it's okay to sit yeah, down for a minute. Yes, yeah, it's, it's okay to if you say to the patient, you know, I'm just going to oh. go over my notes. I have a few minutes left. Let me just make sure I'm not thinking. Okay. What was the question? How long do we have to write it on? 20 minutes. And what would you write for your assessment? Um, I'm sorry, can you explain the finding part one more time? So what do you mean? Pass, pass it around, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just, it's so, no, it's just after the physical. At the very after the physical. After the physical. Can you imagine walking in? Oh, this physical is over. And she handed it to you. So she was supposed to have it tucked under her. I forgot to give it to her. Okay. Yeah. So, so do we? Why is it say, I'm she'll say, oh, I see you out here already or drunk. Yeah. How does she'll, she know when we're done though? What's How do they know they, when they're, they're, she, to they're well trained enough to know. And this is a cue for us in case we're going the wrong way to help redirect. It's just to, sh to guide you on what they have. <laughs> yeah. They're not, they're not going to be able to see you when you have to like you have, they have to know that you're completed what you think you need to do. Okay. If you get the card and you're on point, you're like, okay, cool. Well, I'll talk about free stuff during Yeah. Or if not, that gives you clues to what maybe you missed or you weren't anticipating. Then if you have time, you can go back. Okay. You get that, you miss stuff and you figure out a time. So we have to indicate, or they may know. Okay. And otherwise, the card then is just to help you formulate your assessment. It gives you your findings. Yeah, your findings. What you would right. really yeah. find in this case. Um, so I would suggest, um, based on what I missed, maybe to write your differentials on this cheat sheet. So I should have put differential of uh, mono, flu, viral URI, and then that would have maybe triggered me to ask that. But, um, that would be helpful. What do you think? It, what are five things you think it could be? Go back in with your preceptor, you review it, tweak it, come up with a diagnosis and a plan. That's the first day of clinical. You have to be safe to take a nice history and an appropriate physical. Mm -hmm. That's the point of this class. Mm -hmm. You will be ready. Uh, mm -hmm. It won't take long to demonstrate. Do you have your lab done?